So why does every online idiot want to be an INFJ? Well, if you look at the profiles, they're kind of bent towards the INFJs are special magical snowflakes. And here's the real kicker. They're rare, supposedly, right? Now, where did you get these large data sets and objectively type people and get them in large numbers and figure out the percentages of each type? Hmm? Oh, right. Pseudoscience. Um, it's interesting, when you talk to kids about personality types, like kindergartners, I found consistently that's the first thing they all say, is my type special? Is my type the best? Is my type the most rare? So it's inside of all of us to be high value, rare, amazing, unique. It's no coincidence that what the group sees as the high value type is magically what everybody wants to be, right? Right, okay. So today we're going to talk about helping real INFJs, especially in uh, business settings. I know a lot of you guys have clients. You're going to be getting into clients. You've got some of your own businesses yourself, working with people with businesses. And this is something that we've consistently seen on over time, is that there is absolutely the same exact blind spots that everybody has depending on their general type. Meaning, if you're a lead gatherer, you're going to have problems with the organization. If you're, a, if you're an IP and you're all about self, you're going to have a hard time communicating your ideas to the tribe. So all these tips are only going to work for people that are actually INFJs or even INTJs. And all the people that think they are, but they're not, it's not going to really work out for them because they're not going to have these imbalances. So what are the imbalances of the INFJ particularly? So we've been going over the human needs. And the human needs is one of the big tools that we use to cross-reference with the functions so we can actually objectively type. So the INFJ has lead NI and NI and SI. Both are tools for the human need of organizing. And then the opposite is true. SE and NE is for gathering. So the INFJ is a standard organizer. And what are they organizing? They're organizing abstract connections, patterns. And we talk a lot about muscle imbalances. So with the NI being so overdominant, it creates a giant void in the SE, in the gathering of sensory. Here's what we've seen consistently with the INFJs and INTJs in particular uh, when it comes to their businesses and their websites. The details. So their font is off, the spacing is off, the words are off. You click on their Instagram link, the link is broken. Just a stupid little thing that I do for my own self-amusement. When people are sending me their websites to look over, one of the first things I do is I scroll down to the bottom and I look at the little copyright thing. So if it says copyright 2010, that's usually not a good sign. There's some sensory details right there on the homepage and the person isn't keeping up with them. And that's usually, usually, not always, usually the indication of there's a lot more little sensory details that are off in this person's business model. So when you get a chance to work with INFJs and even INTJs, when you ask them about their business plan, hold on, because they're going to tell you a big, long, abstract story that you can't understand about their business plan and how it works and how great it is and what they're going to do in 20 years and how everybody's going to like it. And it's, it's real impressive. But then when they call you up later and they're struggling to make it work, guess where the problems always are? They're not doing their market research. They're not checking their website. They're not noticing that the links are down. Why? Because they're obsessed over more important things. I got to work on the NI things. I don't have time for that SE shit. <laughs> And this is the problem with all of us is we disrespect our demons. Well, if your demon is SE, you're going to have to look at reality every once in a while. And if your demon is NI, you're going to have to look at the future. You're going to have to look at patterns every once in a while. If you don't, you're going to slam into a brick wall. And it's ridiculous to see from the outside because when you're helping your friend or you're looking at your family members, you can see them doing this shit. But what's so embarrassing is that to our own selves, we can't see our own blind spots, right? You just have to trust the more you see people blind to this shit, you have to go all right, the math says, therefore, I am blind to these areas of reality, even though it doesn't feel like it because your top savior functions are convincing you this is the path, pumps you full of dopamine. It's really hard to step outside yourself. So the kind of help that people don't need is more tips. We all got a smartphone. We all got Google. We can all type in, you know, how to start a business and then just look at all the same stupid articles everyone else is looking at. What people really need help with is their blind spots. And particularly in business, you have like a, a set number of things you got to do. Um, let me just click on one of these here. Here you go. This is a pretty good article. You got this uh, entrepreneur.com. You got evaluate yourself. Think of a business idea. Do market research, etc. And this is a pretty good article. I've seen this before of like the layout of all the things you got. We call the walls of Jericho. So you got to circle the whole castle and have some idea. How big is this? How many departments do I have to have? How many things do I got to do? It's not that you go and do all of them right away, but you got to know how many departments are there. And guess what? All of us, we're going to be focusing in on just a few departments being blind to everything else. So depending on the person, depending on the type, looking at this article here, step one, evaluate yourself. Great. If they're an INFJ and they have demon TI, demon identity, that's going to be a really hard thing to do because they're like, I, I'm 21 years old. I, I don't know my identity. I don't know myself. Oh, it says be brutally honest. Uh, okay, I'm brutally honest, but I'm an unconscious fuck. So what the hell do I know? 
And then think of a business idea. Well, I'm an INFJ. The only thing I could choose is, um, you know, some kind of hypnosis business, right? And then number three, don't do any market research because I don't have SE. And then on and on it goes. So for all of us, some of these things are going to be easy. They're going to come natural. Some are going to be hard. Some are going to think you're doing it, but you're not. So kind of moving on to the next point, how do you therefore help your INFJ friend in his business? Let's just get into that particular. You got an INFJ friend. You're helping him with his business. How do I get through to this guy? Because he's getting bit to death. He's drowning in chaos because he won't do his SE research. He won't look outside of himself. Now, you can't just tell him this. Hey, I'm going to send you this video that says you're not special and you're an INFJ and you suck. People can't take that in. You've got to give it to them in little tiny baby steps and in a way that you empathize with how much hell they're going through. It's say, for example, you're trying to get them to... Um, you know, read a book. It's, you know, I'm always beating the book E-Myth over people's heads, and I know they won't read it, right? I get them to have the book. Either I send it to them or whatever, they buy it, and I say, hey, I know I don't have time. I know it sucks. I know you got all the answers. Just read the first five pages by the next time I talk to you next Wednesday. And then what happens is, of course, they're going to read the first five pages because I set the bar so low, and it's so excruciatingly hard for this person to take in new facts and new information, but it starts getting them addicted because, of course, they don't read five pages. They read 20, and now they're moving. But they would never actually dive in and read the damn book if you say hey read this book they're like no it's my demons i don't want to consume new information Blech. and the same is true depending on the type i was talking with some ip friends and they're having a heart they want to do this big giant sales release they're like hey whoa 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 don't spend two thousand dollars on facebook ads have you run a 100 hundred dollar test yet you don't know if the tribe's going to kick your ass or if you got the greatest thing in the world and you won't be able to keep up with sales run a small thing to get some little feedback from the tribe and then work your way up from there it releases a lot of pressure because the person feels like I either have to go all in, which kills me, or I just avoid it because of the pain. And you can help them see, look, just take a tiny little step. And then you do kind of have to help them and babysit them and get them jump-started the first three months until they can get addicted to, oh, hey, this demon function of mine actually is pretty useful. 